Morning guys, hope you're having a good Tuesday. Um, as you can see, Beverly has just passed her 40,000 mile milestone. Um, so we're basically one fifth of the way to the planned 200,000 mile um, journey that we're gonna do in the uh, 2018 Nissan Leaf over the coming years. Um, now, as you will no doubt have seen the headline grabbing um, wording on the video, um, which is going to go in line with the state of health screenshot I'll show you. Um, she has actually lost less than 1% since the last 10,000 miles, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm not going to obviously say that this is going to be the way it's going to be for you know the, the, the rest of the amount of miles I get out of this battery pack, um, but it does go hand in hand with what a few people said uh, not just in my video uh, vlog, in other people's vlog that have actually done high mileages in these uh, vehicles, like the previous generation Leafs, that they actually level out and become linear in terms of the state of health. So effectively for the next, say, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 miles, it will remain very, very low in terms of losses um, over that given time frame. Obviously, we're gonna have to see. Um, I'd be over the moon if that's the case, as long as it doesn't get to a point where you get to say 90 or 100,000 miles and then it just drops off sharply. That wouldn't be the ideal scenario. I would per personally prefer to lose a set of man every 10,000 miles. Um, so anyway, that aside, um, one thing I wanted to mention is that I was actually, um, that screenshot I showed you, I actually sent to Ryan this morning um, from EV Opinions and um, he actually was mentioning that he's actually um, taking a 40 kilowatt in this morning, apparently, uh, regarding the BMS update. Um, now, one thing I would like to know, I mean, the only way I'm gonna find this out is in years to come, so this is not gonna be something we're gonna find out for ages yet, is if the vehicles that have actually had that BMS update, whether they degrade, if you're using rapid charging, I mean, um, more than what my vehicle is. It'd be interesting to see if someone else ever does. Um, I know that Aaron has um, got a 40 kilowatt, um, but obviously we're gonna, until he catches up the kind of miles I've done, um, unless he starts using it for work, like a courier or something, um, then obviously he'd catch up with me, or he could obviously become a taxi driver, private eye, if you're watching Aaron, maybe an option for you. Um, but anyway, jokes aside, um, that'd be interesting and that, that's something I would actually like to know if you're rapid charging these vehicles um, a lot more than what I am and you've had the update is that going to affect that state of health in terms of a pattern that's developed with my car so, car so far so effectively um, you'll lose a set of, set of man to say 40,000 miles and then it become linear will the rapid charge versions keep going on the path that my previous one was so you'd get a set of man every so often be interesting to know and i appreciate the difference between the 30,000 and the 20,000 was like i think it was one i think it was one and a half percent or whatever it was um it's still noticeable and don't forget guys i always say this um the lease by pro app and or the dongle could actually be false slightly um people have actually mentioned it before saying that there's a slight inaccuracy on that program and all the hardware like the dongle and the software that you're using um, to kind of take these with a pinch of salt what I would say is and I'll show you a picture or a screen grab I've done of my GOM I'm actually noticing that where I used to get regularly 150 miles on my start of the day on the GOM I'm now getting about 150 to 148. So it's definitely showing that there is a loss there of about seven miles, which I would say is accurate um, because you know your car, as you know your own cars, I've said many times before. Anyway, moving on from all of that, um, as you can probably hear, I'm on a very, very rough course road. It's gone very noisy as we've been chatting and there is no creaks or rattles in this car, even at 40,000 miles. It's as good as the day I picked it up, um, which is a phenomenal testament to the assembly plant up in Sunderland, um, where they make it here in the UK. And uh, I've always said this, guys, and I say this to a lot of people who are interested in, thanks Beverly, who are interested in actually buying a BEV, and it's not necessarily in this Nissan Leaf. You have to have 
epic build quality in these cars more so than you would in an internal combustion or, de or uh, like petrol or diesel car because of the silence um, any little creak or groan or rattle would drive you nuts um, whereas obviously with uh, an ice vehicle you've got that to mask it and it'll with the tyre noise and everything else it'd go into the distance on these cars like if you go into a smooth tarmac like now I've just gone out from course on the smooth you'd hear everything um, and it would especially in our industry driving these vehicles all day it would drive you cuckoo well it would me I know it would because I've had creaks and rattles in cars over the years um, and it's just not a nice place to be and it's once you've, you've heard it you can't get your mind off it you know how it goes anyway guys um, that's it for this video for today um, I'm just on my way up to the airport with a client and then after that I'm actually driving the car up to uh, Cambridge um, it's actually worked out really well with this job because it's on my way towards Cambridge and the car's going to go in today for another look at some of the other items on the vehicle regarding like the steering and the creaking and the knocking noise and stuff. Um, I'm actually going to ask the dealership when I go up there today to actually concentrate all of their efforts on getting the steering sorted. Anyway guys, so my next video will be when I get or pick Beverly back up again. Um, they've got the car for two days, so they've got today, Wednesday and possibly even Thursday. Um, and so hopefully I should be able to get the video back up to you probably at the weekend and I'll do um, like the notes like I did before on what they found um, when, I actually, when I pick up uh, the car. Um, one thing I will actually mention to the dealer, which is, I'm not gonna do that again, is actually to remember that this is actually a BEV and it needs charging. Um, so hopefully I, when I pick it up, it will actually have been charged so I can actually drive straight home rather than waiting around for 25 minutes and charging. Anyway guys, I hope you have a good rest of the Tuesday and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye for now.